What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and yes, we're back. It's been a, uh, it's been a fair bit. It's been all quiet on the YouTube front for a little bit here. Um, I needed a break. <laughs> been saying that for a little bit. February was way too much work, and then I thought I was over it in March, um, and I was not. And then I soldiered on, and then I was not in a great place. Um, so I had a good little break here. Uh, but we're back. We're back to uh, the, your regularly scheduled programming, more or less, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was a time. It was not a great time, but it was a time. But um, you guys are wonderful. It's great to see you here. Um, had a lot of nice, wonderful messages and support from you guys uh, in my uh, time off there. So anyways, uh, we're going to be working on Montezuma once again today. Um, I'm not 100% certain what what we might get into because i know brett has been doing some stuff and things and words whistles um if brett doesn't have anything to show i don't know because i think he's off because he's not actually um he's not started his new gig yet so i think he's actually off but i'm not sure what he's up to um <clears throat> if he doesn't have anything to show we'll uh, we'll work on the boiler because the boiler is kind of an amalgam of different things that we need to sort out so anyway um, I guess I better start answering these dings and whistles before they get out of control. <laughs> Let's see here. DRRP, fireman for 15 months. Time is fake. Yes, it is. Uh, how the fuck is it April? How the fuck is it April? Yeah. I had a great, I had a great April Fool's idea that I was going to rope Jersey into and he planned a lot of stuff for it. And then I was up for, like, 22 hours getting the Century of Steam dev log for March done. So we did not get to record it because I was asleep. But, hey, we got the sleep. So anyway, 
Isaac the Sloth. Five months of freeloading. Time is fake. Hi from Europe. Good to see you. Admiral Mustachio. The Birdman is back. Hope you're doing well, Heiss. Yes. It's been a good week uh, this week here. So uh, much, mucho more gooder O than uh, a week and a half ago ish. So anyway. <laughs> the official DNRGW YouTube channel. Fireman for 13 months. Only feels like yesterday you were drunk, <laughs> drunk whiskey and Durango watching the Silverton train depart. Yeah, you gotta love that. Durango and Chama, that's that's like one of the best things. Um, Leighton and I have a favorite memory of stumbling out of Foster's during the Rotary Charter back in 2020 after having drinks and watching live music. There was live music in Chama, which was like, what? Um, but... We stumble out, like wander back to the hotel, and we we're watching a K thirty six switch the yard as we do, and it's just like we eh. like this. So, anyway, Stellar Elk fifty one thirty five. You've been on the ESD for almost a year for free. Well, you gotta love that. <laughs> Allison Chains, formerly my call twelve fifty five. I like the uh, I like <laughs> I like the new username. I saw you on. Uh, the Century Steam Patreon, though. It's, uh, it's great. Allison Chains. Yes. Not Allison Chains. Allison Chains. Very good. Good to see you, too. Thank you. CJ Carthy. Uh, let's see. When 20 fire carrot conversion. Damn Charlie Giordano for that. That son of a bitch. <laughs> we are not making 20 a fire carrot. That was funny, though. <clears throat> Grimsdale virtual hugs and more support than a busty German gal gal's bra. Wow, that's a lot. Why, thank you. <laughs> Blackbird Gaming, he's here. Five gifted memberships. Thank you. Good to see you. LPB, glad to hear you're doing better. Thank you, my friend. SolidWorks, oh man, you're enjoying my vacation away from this. Uh, we've changed gears from me having a bad time to you having a bad time, SolidWorks, so eat it. <laughs> Sean J Animations. Hello, friend. Hey, Mark. Glad to see you're streaming and making things again. I hope your weekend and week has been good so far and will continue to be. The weekend was a lot of work. Century Steam. But I had a great rehearsal at the band last night. Um, and it's it's a busy, jam-packed week um, all the way through. Train show this weekend. Uh, if you're going to be at the Rocky Mountain train show, I'm presenting. I'm still not entirely certain what I'm going to present. But I'm presenting and there's a meet and greet and stuff and things and words, so... Come say hi. Forge Gamer, one year of free memberships. He's made it 12 months freeloading. You love that. That one year, SRE282. Uh, lots of bees. All the bees. Thousands and thousands of bees. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Gotta love that. IDK, what's going on? You can confirm Frisco Silver Doll Line 76 will be painted into Frisco Black with a gray smoke box process and getting the okay for a tender cool that'll be neat blues crew gifting 10 memberships thank you good to see you and there we go we've made it around all right well uh, i guess i'll jump into discord we've got Corey and end in discord say hello folks howdy hello oh i'm set to always on i don't need to always hot mic that's fine anyway uh burler so uh, we have our choo-choo. Brett's been working on some of the other bits of choo-choo. Um, but one thing we've realized... Well, we realized we realized all the things last stream. And we'll have to think about some of these things. Yeah. If I'm going to redo the boiler, I guess I should probably answer my spring rigging question first. Because um, I want to say we figured out that they pocketed um the frame for it the spring hanger i want to say this is not the one i want i want the high the crazy high res one load the picture all the way enhance <laughs> too far there we go okay yeah look at this look at this drawing oh there is a glitch in the scan right where i wanted to look but that's okay mm. 
Yeah, you can see that they pocketed the frames for the those suspension bars. That would, in fact, give us more space to have boiler. So I think we will do that. So I guess, I guess I'll edit the suspension first, and then we'll go to go to boiler stuff later. So rather than using these hangers that we've made over here, we'll use the other. But sh should we just do that all the way around? I don't know. I need to just keep this loaded because it's a giant picture. Molden House, you would love to stay and watch, but you're driving through some bad weather today. You got to keep a closer eye on that. With would like to post a link if that's okay. Uh, YouTube will automatically slurp it no matter what you do. So DM it to uh, me or one of the uh, the moderators, and uh, and then we'll see about posting it uh, if if possible. But yeah, we can't. Uh, YouTube will just eat it otherwise. But yeah, f focus on driving. Don't don't watch my live stream right now. All of them are pocketed through. Then where did? We had reference for that. Um, yeah, we had reference for the those hangers to go around like that. Was that from the front? Hmm. I think Zoom will have the issues 346 did with wearing a hole in its boiler. Uh, yeah, probably, because they all do. I was talking with some of the guys from the DNS, and every single rear grand look narrow gauge engine has that problem. It's just just the what they do. Okay, so we can see we have some hangers there that that do that. That must be the, is that I guess that that's the front one then. With the front, we have a middle elevation, I guess. It's got good geometry for the valve gear in it. Um, but it doesn't have much in the way of suspension. And then, does this have anything on the back hangers? No. But it does presumably have the width of the... Uh... <laughs> Width of many things. Let's see. Do we have an overall boiler exterior dimension? Yes. From exterior shell plate to exterior shell plate is 30 and an eighth. Okay. Why do I feel like that's nowhere? Oh, does that sit over the frame? No, it sits between the frames. Hmm. I am looking at the right lines. Yeah, 30 and an eighth. Yeah, and it goes down between the frames. Okay. Why was I thinking it was only going to be like two feet? What do I have right now? Let us measure from there to there. Yeah, I only have 22 inches. Hmm. What is not adding up here? Oh, this isn't, is this a three foot gauge engine? No, this is not a three foot gauge engine. That's the problem. <laughs> this is a different 12D. This is, a, this is a 42 inch gauge engine. Okay, we're looking at the wrong drawing. That's fine. We've got this. This is a 12D number two. I wish I remembered which drawing's which. And then this is... This guy looks like it's three foot. Yeah, 12D, Denver and Rio Grande. I think May... Okay, May 1871, this would be... 
the first batch of them. Yeah. Okay. Nickel Plate Road 777 gifting 10 memberships. Thank you. It's just a viper. Hello, funny bird man in chat. What do you think VNT will do about redoing the boiler on the Reno? Will I try and keep it accurate by faking the double rivet seam on the one boiler or just use a normal one? Um, uh, they will do what they mechanically have to. They don't have to do crap in terms of uh, uh, making it look right because it's a boiler. It's underneath a jacket. So um, they'll probably do whatever whatever's easiest for them, which might be riveting. It might be welding. So General Bob, hello and good luck with Zuma. Alice and Chains, they all wear holes in their boilers. Dang, they really were the dangerous and rapidly getting worse railroad. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What's our dimension in here? 24 and an eighth. Okay. And we can see that, yeah, the springs. Yeah. I have 22 inches right now. 24 and an eighth would get me. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Let's fix the springs. Um, do we have, does it, does, what does this one have? They really were just obsessed with pocketing those things around there, weren't they? Oh God, they've got the sliding rocker profile and everything. So goofy. Early Baldwinisms. Let's see. It's my favorite wheel arrangement. I don't know if I have a singular favorite. They all kind of do different things depending on what, you know, so. Oh, the bottom frame rail is three inches wide and the top frame rail is only two and a quarter. Baldwin. Two and a quarter. Well, okay. We're going to have to redo a lot of shit. Where's Brett? I, didn't, I don't know what he's redone and what he hasn't redone. Favorite, favorite, favorite wheel arrangement? I don't know. I guess 282s are pretty nice. Well, I like a lot of 282s. So, yeah. If I had to pick, I guess. But a 460 is nice. 280 is nice. 484 is nice. They're all cool. CSX P40 Zero or P408X. An ESD bulkhead flat car ended up on your railroad. Always fun. And Nickel Plate Road 777. What's more cursed than a camel bag uh, uh, or a shay? A camel bag shay. Oh my god. Yeah, that would be a uh, oof. And we're going to have to make some concessions because we're using a wider flange profile. We're using the modern AAR flange profile, you know, for reasons of modernity and appeasing people that have alphabet in their name. But yeah, so we could squish the frame down a bit. And what do I have? Because if it's, um, do I have space? Right now, even if I don't touch the frame, 24 and an eighth. Let's see, our frame width is 24. Just about. They really shoehorned this thing in there. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm just going to cut the suspension on the rears up, I guess. How does that transverse connection work then? Or not the transverse, the... Uh... How does that work with the, um, the equalizer? Ew. Ew. That's gross. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but that's gross. <laughs> okay. 
Zimzam gifting a membership. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you. And Coaster Fan 5363, one rule don't piss off the FRA. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Do not uh, do not make the alphabet math. Alphabet math? Alphabet mad. It's fine. All right. Well. I would much rather have pins. I guess I could slot my... I could slot my lever yeah okay let's open let's open up some suspension stuff um spring rigging why is there only the assembly in there where are the other ones saved hmm SolidWorks, what are you doing with my files? Oh, it's looking for assemblies, that's why. Any any SolidWorks file. There we go. All right, so we'll open up our equalizer and we'll open up our, uh, any of the spring hangers, I guess. I guess we'll just get the dead spring hanger for now. Let's see. Papa Meme Saw, CP's mountain types were amazing. Those things did 90 mile an hour with young valve gear. Also very pretty locos. Yeah, and young valve gear is cool. It's not it, it's not great for some reasons, but it's it's really cool. Uh T12 Productions on May 4th, 2926 is going to tractor brewing. Am I going? God fucking damn them. Why do they always choose to operate that locomotive when I'm out of town? No, I will not be going. One of these times. One of these times it'll line up. Ugh. Screams. It's fine. All right. How big is our dealio here? Not markup. Go away. No. No. Mate. Stop moving the button. Measure. <laughs> that one. The lid. All right. Half inch. That makes sense. All right. So what we'll do is we'll put a little slot in these. And we'll just sketch on the top plane. And then we'll still use a pin. Because the thought of using the spring clip like that's just that's just crap design it's early baldwin bullshit save my, save my progress because kenosha is happening it's fine we haven't done anything yet it's nothing to save all right so give it a three quarter inch and we'll center it up Pins are friend shaped. Hello, Brett. Can I just symmetric? Look at that. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And then we will make those guys collinear, and then make sure we got enough rotation space there. I don't know. Call it three inch. Nickel Play Road 777. Why did 2926 cross the road to get whiskey? Uh, I mean, beer. Yeah. I would love to go. That sounds like a great event. Go get some beer and go see a giant F off Northern. Yeah. I want to see that. Can we just mirror this whole assembly here? This whole little thingy. Can I just mirror it about? that cut chow all right extruded cut all 
Mega Mikey 75. We briefly mentioned the Zuma having an axle pump under the frame last time, but never explained how does that work compared to a crosshead pump. I don't honestly know. I've never seen drawings for how an axle pump works. I've got no idea. Presumably there's something on the axle that causes it to uh, do a thing. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Through all both. All right, and then that. Now we've got slots in our equalizer there. Okay. <laughs> Baldwin Locomotive Works. If you don't like the way we did it, then why don't you make your own design then? What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> So what I'm what I'm talking about and what I'm saying is stupid. Hi Baldwin, you're stupid. You were stupid. You were smart for a bit too, but um, the way that the suspension works out here, let's let's MS Paint this real quick because this drawing is very busy and you probably won't tell what I'm doing. But you see, um, actually I could probably let me I could just we'll trace it, fill it in and trace it here. All right, so the suspension, we have a, um, oh God, it's not gonna let me fill it all. All right, I will just do this. We have the equalizing lever right here, which is what allows the weight to be transferred between the drivers, okay? So that's the lever. And then we have the hangers that go up. In this case, they're just a straight block, basically, up to the leaf springs. Tunk, 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 like that. Okay, so they go through. Uh, the leaf springs being these big honking dudes right here. La 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 la. Okay, so as those leaf springs might tip one way or another, they'll raise and lower this end here. And there's a slot right there that uh, allows a key to be inserted. And so they've got a slot and key set up. So the key is uh, we've, we've drawn the key before, it's yellow. It slots into that and it's the interface between that orange slot and then the red lever. And so they, they designed it this way under the assumption that uh, things would just be fine and you could get pivoting motion off of all of these things. It's a bunch of, of kind of circular crap that you're trying to then torque and pivot to and it doesn't want to torque or pivot because of the extra moment arm and as well the second this wears it becomes flat um because of the way it's set up and so you're getting this very bizarre mechanical motion and it's a rough riding design um this is this is the setup that like 683 has and part of what 346 has um it's not a very good design <laughs> so uh so we'll, we're going to use pins you know because i don't know let's make it a two force member let's make it actually work properly uh that's the hope and dream there so we would prefer it if it didn't seize so that's that's what we're doing here instead of the clips but anyway Zim Zam, PLW and I are going to go have a fight, BRB, Alco Supremacy. Love that. <laughs> Official DNRGW. Nah, -uh, BOW is mine. I'm going to get your K36s. No, you're not. You're going to have to make the K37s, Mr. DNRGW. You haven't finished paying for the first set of K36s. All right. So that's our lever. Um, and so we're gonna have to make a dead, a dead pin and a dead, or a dead hanger and a equalizer hanger. Let me go into my 
file structure here. Let's see, SolidWorks, where are you? If all the locomotive works, I'm gonna go drop a loco on Zim BRB. I'm glad you guys are having fun. <laughs> Skyless Trains, hey, hi, I just wanted to say that thanks for producing amazing content for us to enjoy and share. Thank you, I appreciate that. I need to get back to producing content. I've got, uh, got a video to edit for uh, in advance of the weekend with the train show here, so. Spring rigging. We have front spring hanger. We, okay, we do have an inner spring hanger, so we'll just edit the inner spring hanger then. Inner spring hanger. That one. It's so much simpler too. That that is gonna be the nice thing. We have to mill a slot in the frame, uh, or I guess the death laser will death laser a slot in the frame, um, and then we just funk, do the thing. So, oh, we sketched it differently because, because of the way we did it. I guess we will, we can leave that cut in there. Yeah, I guess we'll get rid of all those cuts. Get rid. Of, well, we'll leave that sketch because we'll use it to cut the hole in the right place. We can leave that slot. The fillet's fine. But this sketch we need to totally change. I'm gonna go scorched earth on this. Leave leave the top and bottom because that's all we need. Burn it all down. Sim Sam, if it's got a rushed and trailing truck, it'll derail before it gets to me. So I'm fine. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's humor based on my pain. <laughs> you love it. It's fine. It's fine. NT12 Productions, highest out of town. 2926, we ride it done. Pretty much. Oh, people are saying there's no music because I turned my volume way the hell down for recording Century of Steam earlier. Oops. It's fine. Because trains are loud. All right. Also, uh, whenever you get a minute, can you uh, start streaming in uh, Discord? Oh, sure. Yeah. All right, we'll, we will fix that fillet. All those edges, they're missing. Yeah, I know, I deleted them. There we go, do that. YouTube is not buffering? Internet, why are you being bad? Stop doing the bad. What is the sketch still mad about? Oh. Cannot find surface or plane. Oh. The surface on which the sketch is. I see. 
It's not like it matters. I was doing a through all hole. There we go. And then you. Add a sketch plane. Just put it there. Kapow. And then we'll add the sketch. All right, I'm going to stop the Discord stream because it's eating the actual stream, I assume, yep. unfortunately. My internet's not cool enough to handle it today. Actually, your YouTube stream, it actually started to stutter before you started the Discord stream. Oh, cool. this oh look I've been missing top chats uh, 94 Chevy made it had to call off work with a hell of an upset stomach with diarrhea this is what my soul needed let's make a motherfucking choo choo thank you my friend I'm sorry to hear about your sad time um, I was I was dealing with some of that unfun um, this past weekend uh, God, on Saturday, it was like my stomach was inside out. It was the worst, um, worst stomach feeling I've ever experienced as a human. It was uh, pretty unpleasant, but then it went away. So, yeah, that was a uh, was a time. <laughs> so, I can uh, commiserate. But uh, yeah, sorry to hearing your experience in that. And then Shani on a mission. One whole year since your gifted breakman, and you were hooked. Thank you for the laughs and the education, Mr. Birdman. Keep up the great content. Will do. Thank you. And Paul, if you build a Dublin piggyback contraption for Zuma, do you think the Coors Brew would let you switch out the standard gauge cars? Wow, that's a shit post. Uh, God, I wish. I kind of doubt it, but. All right, so that's the inner spring hanger fixed. And now we'll open the dead spring hanger and give it the same exact treatment. Just delete that and that and that. Leave the sketch, leave the that, leave the fillet. Accidentally hide the part. Burn it all down with the lemons. Nathaniel, a conductor for 21 months. Good to see you. Goodness, 21 months. It's a little bit of a silly idea, but I'd love to see a Railroad 101 episode about how deadly various railroad tools could be like a spike mall. Ugh. They could all be deadly. That's the secret. Yeah. And Penzi, welcome to the conductors. Thank you. Cyber Tito. Hey, hi. So I was looking to learn how to rig Steam Valve Gear to animate. I was wondering if you had any tips or tool recommendations. Uh, Valve Gear is hard. Yeah, Valve Gear's big hard. Um, my best um, recommendation would be um, there's Valve Gear. Uh, there's a Valve Gear sim. If you look up live Steam Valve Gear sim, the Docstator Valve Gear sims. Um, if you download these, the website is the most 1996 website you've ever seen. Um, 
but this program is fantastic and well put together uh, from Charles Dockstater. Thank you, Charles. Um, that's going to give you a good idea of what the motion should look like, at least on a, on a link-based basis. Um, where do I have that saved? Valkyr Sim, yeah. Uh, so for example, like um, if I put, uh, let's see, Valkyr start, like we've shown this off a couple times. If we do outside admi admission Stevenson, you can slow it down and you can see, okay, what is the motion supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like this. But what is, this is what it looks like all the way in forwards. Okay, this is what it's supposed to look like all the way in reverse. Is it extruded full members? No, but this will show you where the things need to go and where the pivot points are and how you need to rig it. So that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that would be my recommendation is download those docs data programs and, and it should have pretty much anything, um, any type of valve cure you might run into. So uh, it should help you out. So hopefully that helps. Zimzam, the blue flag of justice is a mighty weapon. Yes, it is. And Jackson wages, oh, hey, I'm only 40 minutes late. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. All right. And we will fix the things. The filet. The filet is missing its friends. Instead, we will filet these things. Okay, and then the extruded cat. Sketch is missing a plane. Ciao. And it's still mad about everything else. I don't know why I'm fixing all the stuff it's mad about. It doesn't really matter. But here we go. I'm trying to trying to do some amount of good practice here, I guess. There we go. Come on, you. There we go. I always enjoy this tune and the soundtrack. I, it was, um, I recorded it all with the Firebird. It was right after I got it, and I wanted to be like, hey, let's go try and get a bunch of tones from this thing. And it was fun. I want to say I actually just played drums for a little bit, knowing I wanted to do a slow blues, and then just added all the Firebird to it. It was fun. Extruded cat. Meow. There we go. And there's a dead spring hanger. All right, so now if we go to this assembly, we can now see that we've got crap going through the frame and we're gonna have to adjust the pins too. And I'm actually gonna have to change the, uh... actually I may not, well, no, I'm going to have to change something about how those pins work out. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, we can make those a lot tighter now. <laughs> Ty Daly, if you're missing a plane, go to the airport. Limes! <laughs> oh, I see Wizzlets here. Good to see you. Nathaniel, gifting 10 memberships. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, what uh, equalizing lever pin? Wow, a lot of stuff is mad. Wonder why. <laughs> the spring ringing assembly is very mad. It's almost like I just changed most of the bits in it. Yeah, do we want to go after fixing pins? I suppose. We're in spring ringing land here. How are, the, how are we going to do that before? Are we just going to pray that we could... I don't 
was a wee bit stupid. Are we gonna put the suspension together without having the drivers in? I guess. I guess you could do that, but that would be a little stupid. Uh. Okay, I understand the merit of using the key instead at the uh, at the frame tie. Yeah. Is that what they did with the 12D? Do we have... I guess it'll be in the elevation. Yeah, they just used a key. And then it's constrained by the slot, so it can only ever wander so far. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Was that extruded cat meow? Because it just sounded like that. Yes. Yes, it, yes, it was. We we're extruding the cat. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so what I'm talking about here, um, the way we had this set up before, remember we had the hangers going on the outside of the frame rails here, and then we had this pin that was gonna hold it together. Um, and I guess, I guess the thought must have been, you have the head of the pin here and it's counterboard, and then we would put a cotter pin or something through on this side, but good fucking luck installing that cotter pin. You'd have to go through this. Oh, hang on, if you rotate the drivers. Okay, I see what we were thinking. Yeah. So you have to clock the locomotive in the right position and then you can knock that pin out. It's a little obnoxious. And that's quite the part to, I think we should just use it. If we're gonna pocket the frame, we should just use a spring key. Any objections, Brett, if you're watching? Cause it's what I'm gonna do. All right, let me go find my suspension assembler. Where is that? Spring rigging, uh, the spring rigging assembly assembly. No, we want the spring rigging assembly. We'll, we'll edit the spring rigging assembly assembly later. All right, yeah, dead block. All right, we want to get rid of that pin because we don't need it. Oh my God. That's a lot of, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that's a lot of errors. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Cool. Yeah, we have to change those pins. It's easier to see in this. Which means we're probably going to want to put a counter bore in, um, in, uh, the lever. A little, a wee little one. Unknowing shrug. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess we were just editing that lever, so let's, um, or that hanger. Let's go measure where that lands. From there to there. 1.33. That's uh, that's a really helpful dimension. So what we'll do is we will go back to our dead spring hanger and we will just delete that and we'll delete that sketch. And then we will um, we'll edit that sketch and then we'll just put a center line here and then we will mirror that around that and then we'll just rebuild it and it will not cut extrude it because we have a new thingy so we will edit the feature and make it also cut through the other thingy cut through both thingies there you go laser jet that out <laughs> look thingy
Hey, uh, real quick. Hey, for any of you in the southeastern Indiana, northern Kentucky, there is a tornado warning. So, uh, keep an eye out. Hey, no kidding. Alright, the slot ends up being in the right spot. We'd have to make a really tall key for that, though. I could probably shorten this whole lever by... a little bit. Did I close that drawing? Dead's... oh, that one. That one! Parlay! That's the one. Oh, 18 inches is kind of nice, but can we do 17? That's not a lot. Okay, so maybe 17 and a half. Why not? I guess we could always just shim it, but... I don't know. Alright, that looks a little nicer, and then we can put a could put a spring key. Oh, I guess should those go in the uh I guess we could just put one in here. And then wherever it ends up on the frame it doesn't really matter. Anyway, assembly insert components spring key. And we'll just do a little, little mate, and we'll do a little, little that, and then a little that, just like that, and then a little that, and then it's like a thirty-second of an inch. Maybe it was a sixteenth. 16th. There we go. Cool. And we'll save all. And then that should put that key in. Oh, wow. That actually sits pretty darn near exactly where I want it to. Cool. All right. Well, now we've got more space for more bur burler. Which is exciting. Because we have to redo some stuff in the boiler. Um, let's go fix that pin and the, the equalizer. All right. So what we'll do is we will sketch on there. And we will put little counter bores on our holes. I don't know, what is that? Inch and a half? It's kind of a big counterbore, inch and a quarter. Just a like, just cute little counterbore, inch and a quarter. And then we will do an extruded cat. And we will just do a blinds and do we want to do a quarter inch? It's not leaving a ton of meat. Let's do three sixteenths. Yeah. Okay. And then we will do a, another extruded cat off of the same dealio there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it from a surface, that side, reverse the direction. And pow! Now we've got a counter bore on both of those. So that's exciting. Call sign Apollo! Is it Goose's cat? 
in ESD connector for four months. Here's to four months of fun since you restored my dormant love of trains and to you having an awesome Discord community to share that love of trains in. Thank you, my friend. I'm glad. It's always wonderful uh, hearing about everyone getting back into this stuff. Helps, helps drive me. Uh, when I was having a bad time last week, um, it was the stuff like that, the little letters that people have sent and people have met um, and sh people showing up at the museum and everything wonderful that folks have to say that was keeping me doing this because I was on the fence. <laughs> but we are here, so. Equalizing lever pin. Is that the one we want? Let's see. Assembly, yes, fix it. That one, yes, equalizing lever pin. Now, so I suppose this is this really doesn't have to be long at all anymore. Um, and how does that sit on the real engine here? Where does that pin lie? Running with the devil! Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello. It's going to be one of those clock the drivers to deal with kind of thing. All right. I get, I understand why they used the clips, but this is going to provide for a better ride. I assume. Um, so yeah, we'll just take this guy and we will. Let's see, which one, which one's which? That guy. Change that to a 316. Well, I guess it could be a quarter still, even with the counterbore being 316, so it'll just stick out a smidge. If but... I may make a suggestion based on experience. Yes, sir. You, the head of your pin facing the driver, because it's going to be difficult to get if you have to knock it out, it's going to be difficult to get enough swing on something to knock the pin out. Whereas you can come from the inside of the frame at a good clip and knock the pin out through. There's a very, the very, very specific reason that is not maintenance why why I'm setting it up this way. Okay. It's so uh, that if you can see whether or not your cotter pin or whatever has backed out from an easy visual inspection wherever, oh. so that if you accidentally unlace something, you don't fuck everything in existence. Yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to take apart, but yeah, that's what a that's what a punch is for. <laughs> yeah, you just get a long a long crap bolt or pin will do. Yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah. That that is the the traditional experience in spring ringing is. Um, make it so that the threaded or cotter pinned or whatever connection is facing out so that you can visually check it and go, oh no, that's come apart. I need to fix that. And that has happened. I have come across, um, it was the last Polar Express. I'm doing my pit inspection on the 491 and it was like, where's your cotter pin? You're backing off one of your spring hangers. Had that thing backed off, you know, I mean, it hadn't backed off much, but if it came loose and backed off, that counterweight would have went kashpunk and it would have unspaghettied the entire spring rigging right then and there, right in front of God and everybody. Uh, which is why you do inspections, because sometimes choo-choo's break shit. So I do like inspections and preventative maintenance, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously, if you could inspect it over a pit, you could always check it th that way. But this way, no matter where you're at, if, you've, if you're in the middle of running down the Cumbrace and Toltec... Uh, you know, you can actually verify and go, okay, no, uh, we still have our pins and stuff. So we like that. Yeah. Nope. That's, that's a better reason than what I had. No, your, your reason is very fair, but yes. <laughs> one of the, one of those little things. Welcome to steam locomotive design. It's a, it's an interesting game of what can you do? So let's see the... 1.81 that's an interesting dimension why is it that i guess we want the overall length to be basically i guess a little bit more than two inch hey we're saving material by doing this this way so
let's see. And how big did I make the head of that? This guy. Oh yeah, we said inch and a quarter, so we should probably do like inch and three sixteenths. Do two and an eighth, I guess. And that should be vaguely symmetric when it gets put in place. Lots of stuff is mad about. Lots of stuff. Oh, are you doing suspensionisms today? Yeah, I'm redoing suspensionisms. Cool. Because I needed to... We, we got all those drawings, um, and it's like, okay, well, I wanted to work on the boiler, and it's like, well... In order to redo the boiler properly, I need to have more space for the boiler. And in order to have more space for the boiler, I need to um, <laughs> I need to redo the suspension, which is also going to incur some frame redo stuff. But uh, from what I've heard, Brett has done some stuff to the frame and the valve gear land of things. So we'll uh, leave that to him. Neat. But yes, we've uh, we've done, done some stuff. So. What what are the 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 drawings of? Are they, are they of this thing or are they? No, of... they're of the cousin. They're of the two six zero. Oh, that. Those. Yeah, the rig, the twelve Ds. Twelve Ds. Okay. Yeah, May eighteenth, eighteen seventy one. Those are Jesus Christ! I can't believe those still exist, but. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> the Smithsonian had them, and then Curtis had these high res scans of it, where you just keep enhancing, and you can read what they're fucking writing. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. So it's been like, oh, okay. So I know how wide the like. That's the thing is that they're very similar in overall design, other than you know wheel arrangement and some length and things. So it's like, oh yeah, how wide's the boiler? Oh, 24 uh, and an eighth inches from exterior sheet to exterior sheet. Oh, oh that means that God. I need that means I need more space because yeah. This thing's so tiny. That doesn't include bitty. clearance for rivets, does it? I, I still can't like comprehend how tiny this thing is. That's is, why you gotta build it. You gotta build it. It is a small little dude. <laughs> how much water space does it have? Two inches. Two. Two inches of water space. <laughs> That's your side sheet. Two inches. Itty bitty choo choo. So, My H O N three couldn't run through that. It's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Tech Wolf in terms of Lima, Lima v B L W Roanoke shops for the win. Eh, Roanoke built some pretty cool shit. That's definitely a fair opinion. Well, both of the, both great things that wrote. Well, they they built three. I would call great things. The the A's, the J's, and the Y's. Yeah. Y sixes. Agreed. And, and the A's and the J's were both overachievers for what they were shooting for. They they shot for the moon and hit Mars with those. <laughs> like, oh, we're gonna build a we're gonna build a, a, a small uh, drivered four eight four to to get our heavy passenger trains over the mountains. Oh, it can go hundred fifteen with ease. That's fun. I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah, the thing scoots for how small the the drivers are. Yeah. Um. One of my one of my favorite things, uh, Auntie has it somewhere, but there is in writing. Uh, I think it was J number six ten or six oh eight that went up to the Pensy for testing. They got it up to one ten or one fifteen, somewhere in that range, and they got scared because it wanted to keep going and it was still like dead fucking smooth on the track. And they were like, "No, this is this is an engine with less than seventy inch drivers. How is it doing this?" Scooting. Speedy Choo Choo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the great words of Smokey and the Bandit, I need a Speedy Choo Choo. Speedier than that. <laughs> All right. Darth Alamus, Zuma has really come far since he last caught a stream. 
Well, I'm glad glad it's made a lot of progress. I'm glad you made it back. Yeah. Let's see. Distance. Is it an A? Cool. I know something something advanced mates. I don't know how to use them. And learning things on stream is not not the time. We've fixed the pins. <laughs> All right, let's see. Is there anything else that's like goofily? Yet yeah, there's lots of goofy in this. Okay, cool. All kinds of broken mates. Parallel those boys. Oh, well hang on. We don't want to make those parallel, do we? We want to make them coincident that way, yeah. And then we'll space that at a 16th. Grimsdale. Oh, thank you for jumping chat. Why was the train layout? The wheels were clocked DST. God damn it. Quirt Fred, it was a shame I didn't get to meet you last week, but I hope but it was great seeing the museum in person. I hope you like the gift left for you, JC. You were the one. I had a couple people messaging me about visiting that week, um, and and Dusty took your name. Um, yes, that was very kind, uh, and, and especially for uh, donating to the museum as well. Very much appreciate you. Sorry I didn't get to meet you. Um, it's hard. It's hard to do this and that and this and that and this. And the, uh, yeah, all at the same time. So, but uh, yeah, I very much appreciated you, my friend. RJ Stand Land, have you played with Rare Rotor mods yet? Uh, uh, almost every time I've played Rare Rotor has been modded, actually. Um, yeah. Um, I haven't played with them since they've released. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't touched the uh, the new 10-wheeler. Or not the 10-wheeler, the, uh, the 440 that uh, Greninja and Daniel made. So, at some point, I don't know. I'm taking, uh, I think I'm going to be taking a little break from the, the train video game stuff for a little bit. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Flip it the other way. Definitely not a half inch. Quarter inch. Wow, this suspend, this uh, assembly got all kinds of fucked up. Everyone's gonna just move as one unit now. Almost. One of you is still trying to usurp me. <laughs> that guy and that guy must be parallel. There we go. All right. That doesn't look goofy in any way. All right, rebuild it, save it all. Rebuild and save. There we go. Jordan Freeman, Jersey, in a previous live stream, Action Park was referenced. Please enlighten us on this piece of New Jersey lore. Oh, hell. Oh, God, Action <laughs> Park. Oh, is that the one that you, had had like the you giant, want to die? Th that's yeah. the one that had that fire that killed all the people and invented modern ride safety codes. <laughs> Maybe I, is I, it the I, one? I feel like I've that's the seen... one that they had. They had the the looping uh, water slide. Oh, that yeah. one. <laughs> it's fine. Try, I was the, trying the, to remember which which piece there of was, uh, um, lore I was thinking of. And there was there was a, a point where they were testing the. Um, the water slide, the looping slide, and they would pay someone a hundred bucks, like, like I think kids, like a hundred bucks to go test it. G great, I know, right? Um, and um, after a while, after a few people made it up and down, uh, people were getting lacerations from from the slide, and 
people were like, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's weird. And so they, they looked in the loop, and there were teeth in the loop. Like, human teeth that had been knocked out, stuck to the, the loop, and it was cutting people up as they tested it. It was really, really bad. But they still opened it for business, because of course they did, because lawless land called New Jersey. Ouch. Yeah, both of my parents went there. <laughs> it's not a good vibe. It's a vibe, but, you know, not a good one. Oh, no, my dad loved it. <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, no, it was great. Every year, every like, every time I went, I saw someone leave on a stretcher. It was... <laughs> I mean, that sounds like going to a Motley Crue concert for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biggest pool of blood I've seen. Motley Crue concert. Somebody Jesus. way too uh, drugged on all the drugs. <clears throat> Fell over the railing, face planted. Yeah, that was, was kind of scary. Knocked some teeth out, probably, but anyway. Father Heat, the itsy bitsy choo choo went up the water spout. Uh, you don't want it to go up the water spout. You want the water spout to come down to it. But anyway. Sir Liv, imagining the future Casa de Zuma, a Harbor Freight gantry crane in the garage, three-foot streetcar tracks in the driveway for testing. That's the hope. Something like that. We'll see. Going for know. a Sunday drive in the 240. Going for a Sunday drive in the 240. We, we dream. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, tax time was very unkind to me, so... Mm. joy so I don't know it, I, it might be able to happen this year still but we'll just have to see okay suspension is fixed um I need to go pee and I want more coke zero so entertain the people I'll be right back oh god I hate that job <laughs> Now what? Is this when we announce we're building the uh, proposed Lehigh Valley 2102 Camelback? <laughs> yeah, that was a thing. Oh, uh, it was proposed. It was but proposed. Yes, it was a thing. So 1904, uh, Baldwin made up a proposal. The, the railroad itself is not noted on the drawing. It's got to be LV. It's, it's all gotta Lehigh be, Valley. Yeah. <laughs> the, the date is 1904. Lehigh Valley started taking delivery of the 2A2 Mikados in 1903 to 1905, 1906 from Baldwin. And then the last bunch, like 1905 to 07, was from Alco. But, so, it just screams Lehigh Valley. First off, Lehigh Valley was the only one who ordered such large Mikados, excluding the Erie L1s for a moment. So, the normal largest camelbacks were for the Lehigh Valley. You have the Pacifics and the two eight and the uh Mikados. My stepfather's calling me. What timing? Um so the two ten twos according to the print are much larger than their two A two cousins. So you have an additional one hundred tubes of the same size that the two A two Mikados had. As well as an additional twelve square foot of great area an additional four inches of cylinder diameter and an extra inch taller driver set and the middle three driver sets are blind so you take that and then you also take the other standards on the drawing which is the almost obvious lehigh valley standard tender in the drawing so it just fits the lehigh valley persona right off the bat if you take Lehigh Valley's standards for boiler pressure at the time of taking delivery of these in the M35s and so on, you assume a boiler pressure of 200 pounds, which puts the tractive effort of this proposal in 1904 around 73,300 pounds. <laughs> and now the question is, is why didn't the Lehigh Valley buy these? Well, the Lehigh Valley doesn't have a history that they are very fond of with 10 coupled engines. They ha took delivery of two in the 1880s. The B and I think the Ant. Ant. It was Ant, Ant. and B. Um, 
it's not that they didn't do well. They actually performed their job very well. The Lehigh Valley track just didn't like them so much that they were a little too rigid for the Lehigh Valley's liking. So Lehigh Valley turned one into a 282, which they also the did. The first like. 282 in the world, by the way. Yeah. And then I forget what happened to the other one. I think they just became consolidations after. Uh, that. no, the uh, the other one got turned into a four eight zero. Did, did I hear correctly oh. that you were saying something about a two ten two or a two ten zero with three blind drivers? Two ten two Camelback proposal that the Lehigh Valley, more than likely, it was the Lehigh Valley asking Baldwin, "Hey, we like these two eight two Mikado Camelbacks, but can you do it bigger?" And so Baldwin drew up something that was monstrously bigger. I mean, we're talking 30,000 pounds of tractive effort bigger than the Camelbacks. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the Mikado The Anthracite Camelbacks roads is that much larger. are an interesting time. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's really funny because um, the Lehigh Valley, uh, and this part of the railroad is still in place, had the sharpest curve on a mainline railroad anywhere in the United States, and that was Oxbow Curve. And it's still in service on the uh, Reading and Northern. You can ride the uh, Lehigh Gorge Scenic around it. And so for the Lehigh Valley to go to Baldwin and say, yes, 282 is good. Give us a 2102 to fit around that curve. Well, and then the the Lehigh Valley didn't order those. And then like a decade and a half later, they ordered the R1 class, which they then used for about a decade and then sold them all almost all of them off because they were too slow and the lehigh valley at that point could buy mikados that were just as large could do the same job but were faster so the lehigh valley in the history of having locomotives with 10 couple drivers it's, it's just it there wasn't a lot of history with that whereas you know with the other railroads you know they all had decapods and stuff so that was normal but you know these would have been cool the, the Lehigh Valley probably thought really long and hard about buying them, but decided no. So. I've just realized, and my face has been making funny faces down in the bottom corner, because uh, in 1871, these boilers had two single lap seams on the, the wrapper sheet. That's scary. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> like, just, just make it tangent right there. We'll have a single lap seam and then continue the arc. No, but for you see, when the crown sheet melt, top of boiler go up. Not that crew, it go up. <laughs> Baldwin, you drunk bastards. I mean, it just lift the cab off with you, that's all. I will be back, I'm gonna go see what that phone call was about. Something that fascinated me, because I, I was reading about it, and I've probably got to ask, like, Dan Gallery or someone about it, is there was, like, a comprehensive write-up on, I think it was, I think it was VNT's Reno? Hmm. And around 19, like, early 1910s or whatever, they went to Baldwin for a quote on getting a new boiler for it, because, you know, 1873 or 4, 440. Um... And I guess they just didn't like what Baldwin sent back because they wound up going in, finding the single lap seams and reinforcing them to keep them in service with the original boilers, from what I see. Hmm. Which is weird, and I don't know if that's true. I don't know if, like, I mean, I would assume it's true because it's an eight, early 1870s engine and it was in service fine until the, what, the 40s? I don't know how common that was to do if if it was like a common practice to go back to a single lap seam and go, no, you're a double lap seam now. Uh, a lot of roads did, yeah. A lot of, I've seen that with a fair few engines. Huh. Blech. Well, I got the suspension redone. I don't know. I'm uh, My brain is still mush from uh, my all-nighter of Century of Steam the other day. Um, so I'm still tired, so I think I'm going to call it there, uh, cause I don't really want to start something else right now. So short stream <laughs> today, but we're back. We're here. We're doing stuff. I see Slandered Stone made it to a year month or a year mark. Happy one year. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. But, um, yeah, I think we're just going to call it there and, um, 
and we'll be back at it again uh, next week. Goodness, yeah, next week's gonna it's gonna be a busy couple weeks, but uh, yeah. So catch you guys later. Thanks for tuning in.